What most worries you about realizing the VR revolution? At this point in 2017, 2018, what's still holding it up? So um, cost is a huge one. Cost from which perspective? So if you right now, if you want to have a high-end experience, um, like, an, like an Oculus Rift or Vive, you've got to invest in a very expensive computer um, and a, an expensive headset. It's a few grand, right, to really do this. Um, so that's a very um, uh, expensive one. I think that, to be honest, um, people have to do VR right because you can make people nauseous. And the nausea thing really worries me. Um, I don't think there's any reason to make people nauseous. Um, it's easily avoidable. Uh, you just lock the camera down for now. But um, uh, that's a really, you know, issue. And, and, and the hype, of course. The hype could kill us. But I still think that there's so much to experience. And <clears throat> the amazing thing is we know that when things get crowdsourced, when more people get involved, you get better and better stories and better and better um, technologies. And, and, and I think that that is what happens. We provide that different kind of interaction with the world, with everything around us that's based on science, physics, 3D, spatial modality, densities, fields. It's a field mentality. It lines up with quantum mechanics and it works today. And the, the technology and the hardware finally is starting to get to the point that the methodologies, we've been working like most people here for 17, 18 years on this, and the methodologies are now beginning to take foothold. And when you do that, you can change everything. With volumetric video, you could, you could have an opportunity to watch a basketball game from the free throw line. You have the opportunity to see what the quarterback saw when he threw the interception. And innovative interfaces like the gentleman down here talking about will allow you to you know, volitionally move through that space. With 360 degree video, you can look at one place in, one point in space and kind of look around. But with volumetric, you can move anywhere you want. And so with virtual reality and volumetric video and a really good user interface, it allowed the fans to really get deep into the, the game that they love. Is it always going to be a niche product, or could you imagine in 10, 15, 20 years that all we'll watch is 3D? I don't know if it'll be all we'll watch. Um, uh, you know, there's so many wonderful, wonderful films. There's so many beautiful things that are made in, in other medium theater. Otherwise, I don't think it's going to go away. There's nothing like a live performance. But I do think um, you will be having many more networked live experiences with other people in a virtual way. Um, I, I don't think there's any reason why websites should stay 2D. I think every website in the future is going to have depth. I mean, if you're a fan. Wow, that's incredible. So, so the internet will all be 3D? I think the internet will all be 3D. Well, I mean, why, if you're a fan, why would you want to look at pictures of something when you could walk around a set and be near the hologram of your star? And I mean, why would you ever want it to be flat like that?